The temperature of the water here today is only about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too cold to go swimming, but we're actually here just to get the salt water itself. And according to the internet, only about 3.5% of the salt water is salt itself. So that means if you were to take about one cubic mile of salt water and let all the water evaporate off, you'd still be left with 120 million tons of sea salt. I've wanted to do an experiment for a couple years where I take salt water and just let the water evaporate and see if we can get salt left over. Theoretically, it should work. Now we went down to the super center this morning and picked up a one gallon container. When we fill this thing up with seawater, it should be somewhere around eight pounds heavy. Now here's the crazy thing, out of eight pounds of seawater, only about 127 grams of that is actually gonna be sea salt. So that's our question today. How much sea salt will we get out of one gallon of seawater? That's what we're here to find out. Guys, this water is super, super cold. It's only like 50 to 55 Fahrenheit, which is a lot closer to freezing than we want it to be. Oh man, we're trying to get out a little bit further so we don't get all the sand churning up in it. All right. Beautiful. Our one gallon of seawater, guys. How does that feel? How heavy is that? It feels fairly heavy. That should be somewhere around eight to 10 pounds of seawater. Yeah, it feels about like a baby. <laughs> about like a baby, a newborn baby? Yeah. Which uh, we may be having next year. Ooh. But out of that eight pounds of seawater, somewhere only around 130 grams of sea salt is actually diluted in there. Oh, dude. What'd you find? We caught a jellyfish or like a baby something. Oh, wow, right wow, there? wow, wow. We did, we got a jellyfish. So he's right there, guys. Can you see that? We caught a little baby jellyfish and we didn't even know it. We we're gonna let the little jellyfish go back in the ocean, but uh, we're gonna do another scoop of seawater. Yeah. That's what I call catching a wave. No kidding. Nicely done, baby. Let's take it in. Woo. We caught eight pounds of seawater or Let's somewhere around there. Some clear, clear water this time. No sea life, no jellyfish in this one. Now, of course, you know, seawater is not drinkable because of all the salt in it. By drinking salt water, you'll actually kind of dehydrate yourself and your organs will start shutting down. So salt, as good as it is, can actually be very harmful. You cannot drink this water. But if we boil off the water or let it evaporate, we'll be left with a substance at the bottom that theoretically will be sea salt. Right now, it looks like we got a little bit of sand in there. Yeah. We're gonna have to filter that off before we do anything. Okay. But cool. So we got our seawater from the Oregon coast. Let's take this back home, process it, and see if we can extract the salt from the salt water. I've had this sitting at camp here for a couple of days and that's given all the sand and any impurities a chance to settle down to the bottom. There really isn't much, but just to be safe, I'm gonna transfer this into another clear container so we have pure salt water and then we'll fill this thing up with more salt water and take them both back home. The sand stays pretty well at the bottom, so it doesn't take much to transfer that over. And now what we're left with is pretty clear. Well, there's our relatively pure one gallon of seawater. Let's take it home and get this stuff processed. And boom, update guys, here we are 10 months later. I've just had this project sitting on the shelf and today we're getting around to it. So this here is the water we collected from the Oregon Ocean. Looking at it, it's crystal clear. There's nothing on the bottom and there's hardly anything floating around inside. So that's about as clear as we can get it. I got a spoonful of it here, let's see how it tastes. Mm. Tastes just like salt water. So here's the setup today, guys. We've got an eight quart pot, a scale, and a measuring cup. And the purpose of today's experiment is to find out what will happen if we boil crystal clear salt water. So let's go ahead and measure it out and get boiling. So apparently two cups of water works out to be about 500 grams, which makes sense because each cup is 250 milliliters. One milliliter of water is usually one gram and it doesn't seem to be much difference with seawater as well. So theoretically we could just pour all the seawater we wanted in here, take the amount of grams and that's how many milliliters we would have. This should take us up to 3000. I'm gonna stop it right there. We've got exactly three kilograms of salt water, which is equal to 12 cups. So we got 12 cups, three kilograms of crystal clear seawater. Let's go ahead and throw it on the stove and boil it off.
So update guys, it's been about an hour and a half and we have boiled off all of that ocean water. There's no water left, it's bone dry in there, and that crystal clear ocean has left behind a white residue. What do you suppose that could be? Now I've set up a scale and a bowl over here. We can go ahead and zero that out. Now we can go ahead and take a spoon and scrape out all this white residue and measure how much we've collected. Oh, look at that. Came off in a big chunk. Kinda cool. Look at that. So here we have it guys, we have literally just taken the salt out of salt water. And it comes out in these crusty little crystals at the bottom of the pan. And the reason is because it's not a pure salt, there's a lot of different salts in there. But it is sea salt nonetheless, and out of 12 cups of seawater, or 3,000 grams, we were able to capture exactly 100 grams of salt. So if you collect your water from the Oregon coast, you can probably expect that water contains about 3.3% salt. Okay, update guys, here's what I've just done. I took all that white crusty stuff and threw it in a blender and blended it up so it was more of a powder. Then I went down to the local grocery store and picked up a couple of glass salt shakers and transferred the white powder over. Screwed on the lids and just like that, we now have ourselves one and a half salt shakers full of real genuine sea salt. How does it taste? Mm. Still a little bit warm from being in the oven. That tastes like really good salt. In fact, this would go really good on popcorn. I'm craving popcorn. Real sea salt's becoming very popular in the health food community and you see it popping up all over bags of chips where they're promoting that they use real sea salt to season their product. Now we just have to figure out how to make cracked pepper. Okay guys, let's talk about this experiment for a second. We started off going to the Oregon coast where we captured a couple bucketfuls of raw seawater. We let that water sit overnight in a couple containers where all the sediment went down to the bottom and we captured only the water off the top so we were left with crystal clear seawater. We brought that seawater home, threw it into the pot on the stove and let it boil on high heat for about an hour and a half until all the water had evaporated. The only thing that we were left with was a white crusty residue that we call sea salt. So we crushed it up, threw it into a couple of salt shakers so we can use it on our popcorn tonight. And that's pretty much this experiment in a nutshell guys. You now know how to turn ocean water into real sea salt. Thanks for joining me for this experiment and I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Oh, your shoes, honey! <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Got him. Good save, good save. <laughs>